for that. My, I'm respectfully, my lord, uh, not in this. Now I, I'm not opposing his. Lord, let Dr. Singhvi complete. Then you see there that. are some issues which I, as a governor, cannot deal with. My friend will deal. That would be a sore rejoinder. Let him say it now. I'm not opposing his saying. Your lordship is permitted to say it. No, no. He is not formal. Dealing with he, your... He may be wanting okay. to reflect on it for a couple of minutes. That's all. Some paras I'll point out at the end. Which no, no, no. This will be a sore rejoinder. Right? This is not... Whenever your lordship says. So all I right. Need it. We'll see. Well, yeah. Your lordship will allow a note. Otherwise, your lordship will have a full-blown rejoin sore rejoinder in terms of two minutes. We thought five... allowing a note would be prejudicial to you. Oh, Therefore, right. we said we'll hear them in all. He's agreeable. He's fair. No, he's agreeable. rejoinder. There will be a sore rejoinder. All right, all right. Uh, Mr. Not, uh, Mr. Call, you circulate a short note. Not more than two pages. Yes. Not more than two pages. Yeah. Give, very give very a copy to. That, that's that's fair. That's fair. Very very fair. One suggestion. I subject to what your lawyer says. I'll take exactly two minutes by the clock and just give the paragraphs. Can I do that? That can only note. That can be the note. Only two minutes. That is. That is. A, that is. A, that is in para 119, my lords, of Bumai. Specifically, the issue of legislators withdrawing support is taken care of. Bomai was a case of two parties merging and then a few MLAs withdrawing support. In para 119, just it is. Second, we'll just make just a note of it. Bomai. Para 119. Just one second. PDF. Page 368 of the compilation, volume 2. Yes. It is specifically said in para 119, in this connection, it is necessary to stress that in all cases where the support of the ministry claimed is to have been withdrawn by some legislatures, the proper course for the testing, the strength of the ministry is holding the test on the floor of the house. The only argument that I'm seeking to make, my lords, that this is a flawed argument from the other side, as if there is an alternative mandatory mechanism provided. Under the constitution, there is no alternative mandatory mechanism provided to say that this should have been done and not that. When a governor looks at a position where MLAs come forward and say we are withdrawing support, to say that till yesterday you were together, Today, you are not together is not under after Ramesha Prashad, the mandate of the governor at all, because that amounts to getting into the ethicality and the correctness of who should be with whom. Just testing the proposition, the BJP and the Shiv Sena were pre-poll alliance. Now, someone could say post-poll, wasn't it unethical that for 30 years you were together and you ditched and went with someone else? I'm not getting now. That's not the governor's domain. Okay. All that the all, governor sees is that you, point you the, now, the governor sees is you have the majority or not close it on the floor of the. Why are you excited? Okay. Then what is? Secondly, my lords, para one ninety one of Nabam Rebia. Yes. Read with para two thirty three to two thirty five of Nabam Rebia. 233 to 235 of Nabam Rebia specifically deals with Article 179 subclause C and removal. It is absolutely incorrect to say that Nabam does not deal with removal at all. Para 191, 233 to 235 specifically deals with Article 179 subclause C and removal. Thirdly, my lords. Para 238 of Nabam. Because this whole argument of intention to remove, actual removal, Justice Mishra deals with it and says, you will not wait till the date when the resolution is moved. The moment an expression of interest is given, an expression of interest is bound to be by way of a notice. The moment that notice is given is when the clock starts ticking because between the intention expressed to remove and the actual resolution being moved, you can actually alter the composition. So that's dealt with, my lords, there. Lastly, my lords, this whole uh, last just two arguments. Form one, what I had mentioned, my lords, was when your lordship had asked me in that context, that is any post mentioned. There is no post mentioned there. 
So the purpose of what I wanted to say to your lordship, maybe I should have made myself clearer, is that under Rule Three, just show me Rule Three, that where designations are given, where it says a statement in writing containing the names of members of such legislature party, together with other particular particulars regarding such members, as in Form One, and the names and designations of members of such party who have been authorized for communicating with the speaker, is given by the leader of the legislature party. And if your lordship were to have Form One. It is just have form one for a minute. Page. But it's furnished by the leader of the legislative party. Yes. And then it says name of the corresponding political party. So the, and then lastly, my learned friend made an argument. Please come to that party in, in the beginning. Please must see that party. But let's please see how is it being read. Firstly, please have G, 2G for a minute. My lord, the doctor. 2G. Yes. Member means a member of the Maharashtra Legislative Assembly. Then F says leader in relation to a legislature party means a member of the party chosen by it as its leader and includes any other member of the party authorized by the party to act in the absence of the leader as or discharge of the functions of the leader of the party for purposes of these rules. My learned friend wants your lordship to read this, divorce the rules and say it means political party. And now, please have rule three for a minute. Re sub clause five. Just have rule leader refers to the person who is designated by the party. By the legislature, a member can only be the leader of the legislature party. That's what I read. No one else other than a member of the legislature. No, but see the definition of leader. It's very clear. It is just designated by it. It means by the by the legislative. Yes, the political no, party. Political party. No. It doesn't use the word political. That is your interpretation. No, no, but this no, no, is no, very no. clear. This yes. is very clear. Just read the rule. Please read yes. that. The rule read is the definition. In definition. relation to a legislative party means a member of the party chosen yes. by, by it, it as it yes. leader. Yes. By the party, according to us, here means that it's the MLAs who get together and elect. No, 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 no. no, no. no, no. no, no. Not the party means chosen by Malos, it means by, by the political no, Malos, please see what and see says. and see the and the word which says and includes that makes it even more clear Malos, may I... and includes just read and includes yes and including i i will just read that for a minute just have 2g for a minute a just, a just a minute just have 2g for a minute 2g member means a member of the legislative assembly member means a member of the legislative assembly right has to be then le leader in relation to legislature party means a member of the party chosen by it as its leader. Manoj, it's the leg elected legislatures who choose a leader of the legislature party. My learned friend is trying to say that somewhere else. But leader, leader, definition of leader. Leader, Manoj, there is no... I don't think there's any... Yes, leader in relation to a legislature party means a member of the party chosen by as its leader and includes any other member. Any other member is a member of the legislature party of the party authorized by the party to act in the absence of the leader. Now, just for a minute to for the completeness, just have rule three sub clause five uh, four, uh, four, five for a minute. Just for a minute, my lord. Definition of leader is two F. I I read that I read three five. Okay. Yeah. Three five. Where a member belonging to a political party, any political party, votes or abstains from voting in the assembly, contrary to any direction issued by such political party or by any person or authority authorized by it in this behalf, without obtaining in either case the prior permission of such political party, person or authority, the leader of the legislature party concerned, or where such member is the leader of, uh, is the leader, or as the case may be the sole member of such legislature party. Such member shall, as soon as may be thereafter, may be thereafter, and in any case within 30 days from the date of such voting or abstention, inform the speaker, as in form two, whether such voting abstention has has or has not been condoned by such political party person or authority. Malad's leader is always by the elected members of the legislature party. When is a leader is always, for instance, the MPs get together, the MLAs get together to appoint the leader. We'll consider that. Anyway, as was done in 2019, and then what is important for your lordships to know is so according what to the, the party means uh, the le the legislature. Party. Yes, and why I am saying so is my lord, everyone understood it to mean so because that was the party convention right through. That was a question, my lord, the chief justice put in the initial rounds of arguments. 
that there has been a convention because those letters were shown. They've also understood it to mean the same thing. This is now an argument being made to somehow get out of it. That's all that I wanted to say, my lord. The leader conventionally in every party is elected by the elected members of the legislature, whether in parliament or no, not imposed by the party. Party means the political party. That's the only interpretation which is in tune with the democratic principles. That you have the electorate voters, they elect MLS, MLS elect their leader, and the leader is responsible to the House and consequently to the voters. Because constitution does not talk of political party at all. I hope they leave something for the written note for this. Manoj, <laughs> lastly, I'll just end by saying my learned friend had also argued that the letter contained contain no reasons for removal of the speaker when my Lord Justice Kohli put to them that where is that letter, read that out. Now, my Lord, one thing which has to be kept in mind is we are not dealing with a notice under disciplinary proceedings <clears throat> where someone should be given details of what is the case that he has to meet. The words used are for removal of someone. You categorically in detail, Para says you've lost the majority of the house. That's what Nabam said, that if you have confidence of winning the confidence, go and face it. All. Win the confidence. All right. Yes, Dr. Sikhi. Yes, Manoj. That's all that I wanted to say. I'm very grateful, yeah. Manoj, for this indulgence given by now, you. Manoj, uh, some of it, yeah. my learned friend will answer, Manoj. At the end, they, that will take 10-15 minutes. He'll cover that. But let me, Manoj, come to my first. Let me stick to my sequence. Just an aside, Manoj, all that was done in the last 10 minutes was reference to everything but the whip. The only issue relevant is whip. Your lordship would be asked to turn parliamentary and party-based democracy on its head if you were told that whip is not issued by the political party. What your lordship has shown just now is totally irrelevant and red herring because it is intimating to the speaker and the house that in this house, my leader is so-and-so. That is a communication between those in the house communicating with the speaker. Speaker has to know whom to communicate with. It is no communication of the party with its members. That's the whip. And that the party issues, the party decides. But that follows apart. We'll come to those rules. So this is completely irrelevant. The, well, it, is no, it cannot be anybody's case that in the context of a whip, the party, the political party, is to be ignored and the legislative party is to be looked at. Now, but leave that aside. Let me go in my own sequence first. first. I'll come to that. Well, as your lordships ended before lunch, it's a simple flood, finish with a flourish, well, as about democracy. Let me just start with that. Well, as according to my respectful summary, I'll come, well, as seven, eight. Do you head. follow the same note, Dr. Simi? Now, well, as on the note, I have an apology, a little bit of a well, as mix up. Well, as the note, my note came to me in the morning. I corrected it and sent it back. Somehow it didn't go through. So they have filed by mistake the old note, which I had not corrected. There is Luckily, sitting here, I found it, well, as, and I corrected it. It has been, we've got hard sets, it's been emailed, but your lordship's well, uploading is in your lordship's domain. So, well, as the courtmaster was told all this, so your lordship may have to either upload it or have the hard sets. So, there's a mix up, well, as the uncorrected note came here. I made many corrections in that. So, uh, this is A7, lordship, call it A7. And my learned friends have all got it, free lunch. This will be in substitute, I'm sorry. This, this will be in substitution of A6. A6 is the wrong one, the earlier one. A6. <coughs> A6. Region the final PDF. Let me well, just summarize orally and then I'll come to the note because it will be much well, it's easier to follow the crux of my submissions. May I start? Your Lordships have got one, yeah. either the hard copy or the soft one, whichever your Lordship is using. Okay. Same. Yeah. Same. What is the change? No, there are a lot of changes. In the, your Lordship may just take this one. Starting is the same. Same paragraph. No, no, starting. But, well, there are changes. There are changes. Lordship may malus junk the other one. Otherwise, Lordship will be confused with the other one. So just comparing. but uh, No, no, malus. There are changes. I Lordship may just tell them, your Lordship's assistants to uh, delete that earlier A6. That's all. Otherwise, there may be some confusion. <clears throat> 
There are whole sections which are added, etc. That's all right. You'll also use this. Now, this is the first submission, and I'm not going to follow this sequence. Allow me to oralize this. My first of my sequence, eight facets, is something which is repeatedly fallen from your lordships. And well, yesterday it fell directly from my lord just in that sema. That well, is <clears throat> your lordship is concerned about democracy, majority becoming less, or your lordship use the word overwhelming numbers going this way or that way. This connects with that. The simple answer in one way. I'm I'm now giving your lordship a different facet. Well, my submission is that your lordship has to go back to the origins of the 10th schedule and first point under this head, this head brothers is that the 10th schedule has two components, not only one. One is a prohibitory negative code. It's a negative code. <clears throat> so a negative code is what you should not do, violate you know, whip, voluntary resignation, cohabiting with malus, other people, etc. But there is also an affirmative, positive part of that code. <clears throat> and what the 10th schedule does is to strike a balance between the negative and the positive by a constitutional amendment. <clears throat> it is my respectful submission is vital for your lordships to give effect to both negative and positive in letter and spirit because your lordship is actually implementing the constitution and some of the arguments of the other side have bordered on suggesting that a mere, I'm using the word mere advisedly in comparison to a constitutional text, a mere symbols order will be competing with a constitutional text. That would be malus, completely anathema to all known principles. What are these two codes, malus? The negative code is that you, in a nutshell, I'm just saying, in a nutshell, I'm oversimplifying. You will not voluntarily give up membership to an A and you will not violate WIPs to one B. Just in a broad bullet summary. <clears throat> what is the affirmative permissible activity? You are entitled to dissent only within that permissible zone. Otherwise, why enact the 10th schedule, Mullahs? Prior to 85, you didn't have the 10th schedule. You had Jungle Raj, which you called Ayaram Gayaram sometimes, but you, Manas, then you can also justify that in the name of free speech, free action. What you did here was you allowed a zone of activity, permissible, affirmative, but you cannot, you cannot say that I will go beyond that permissible and thereby violate indirectly the negative code also. What is that permissible activity, the affirmative code of conduct? One is a faction or a split till the 91st Amendment. They gave you an escape route, advisedly, consciously. That is gone. It was there. So, well, the constitution famous thought that along with a negative code of conduct, so as not to stifle you completely, we give you an escape route, exit route of faction or one third or whatever it was called. Well, second, merger. Third, and this is actually well, is the most important part of the 10th schedule. Well, is elections barring a few cases, well, in the days of 1960s, etc., well, there used to be a very strong, large number of independents. Independents have now dwindled, the statistics show. Well, even then, in terms of 545 Lok Sabha, you had hardly 30-40. Well, but well, independents commanded a coordination. Well, my father also got into Lok Sabha on an independent party investigate. So I know that time it was Mr. Nath Pai and so many people. But today, Malaz, even then, party democracy was, everything was based on party. You got a ticket and you fought and you won because the party projected you as its candidate. That is now, Malaz, much, much truer after the 60s, 70s onwards. Today, Malaz, the number of independents compared to the 60s would be Malaz, a fraction. So it's party-based democracy. You like it or not, Malaz, it's not for anybody to question. We've chosen it, but there's nothing perfect. Some people say US is better, some people say European, but this is what we've chosen. 
Okay. Now, this third third balance. Third point is what? What is the so point? One is balance. Uh, split is split, permissible. Split, merger is merger. Is third now. The third point. Third comes with the light of what I said just now. The whole idea of the ten schedule is resign and recontest. That's what is stopping you from doing. You enter the door through this door, and then you retain your ministership and seat while exiting through the other door. Sorry, not permissible. Resign. Have the courage of your now, you fellows. You you are a very vocal freedom speaker. You have the courage of your conviction. We just Jivan Reddy referred to in that extract. But I'll be dealing with some of that. Was not the context of the tension. Yeah. But I'll be dealing with that. Some judgments have referred to it. I'm going to suggest it because this is the core question. My lord, this is Narsimha asked. My lord asked earlier. What do we do when an overwhelming set of people want to express dissent? Nine tenths. Let's say nine out of ten. Fellows. Let's take an extreme example. How do we balance and countervail these two fellows competing balances? The ten schedule says you can go thus far in balancing, not further. Whereas if you are so much for free speech, courage of your convictions, this is a rotten party. I can't say resign and contest, recontest. What is the problem? Then, whereas the fourth is the exemptions. There, are, there is a, apart from merger, there is the exemption clause, condonation, whatever. All that is given there. Now, what we are, whereas we have to see is that if a constitutional amendment balances the prohibitory with the affirmative part. You cannot find an excuse to circumvent fellows, the prohibitory part by going beyond the four avenues of the affirmative part. Now only three. Action is gone. Now, fellows, let us take this further. That's your lordship's query. I'm sorry, fellows. There is a fifth one. I, I forgot. There's a fifth one. I'm now breaking it up. There is a fifth uh, balancing on the affirmative side. You are so concerned about free speech. You are resigning is one, or you absolutely hate where you are. You go to the election commission and start your uh, uh, para fifteen proceeding that I am the real party. But you do that without indulging into the prohibitory part. That's as well as keeping the sanctity of the tenth schedule. Now I'm addressing the core dilemma of my lords. Let me develop it, Bulus, in a minute. That's also a statutory remedy, lower than constitutional. So the fifth is, Bulus. Now actually only four because that faction is gone, split is gone. So four. The fourth would be file a complaint to the election commission. Say, look, nine of us are standing here. We are the party. Recognize us. Till then, don't do any prohibitory activity. The election commission will or will not recognize you and is subject to challenge. What does this do, Malus? This maintains the sanctity of the ten schedule and maintains the negative and the uh, the affirmative parts of the ten schedule. What does my lord normally prefer? A option I give your lordships, which reduces the other option to vanishing point, or an option which harmonizes both. Elementary principles tell your lordship by thousand cases that your lordship prefers the harmonisation approach. Elementary common sense shows that my learned friend stand reduces the ten schedule to vanishing point. It is as good as a dead letter or a repeal. Which is better? The answer is self-evident. Now, Malus, here, just see Malus how how this dead letter vanishing point arises. You don't resign with the courage of your convictions to fight another election. You don't go to the election commission till much later, almost a month, just under a month after 21st you went to Guwahati, 19th you go to the election commission, two days before a month is ending. You don't seek condonation. What you do is bullets. What I call. A three steps novel procedure to annihilate the tenth schedule. It's a three step novel procedure. Step one of which is disable the speaker by giving him a mere notice. So the man can't touch you on the tenth schedule. Just see, well as my submission of harmonization versus vanishing point. Step two. 
of this Balad's uh, sinister three-step novel procedure is to forward resolutions parallelly to the governor, who in turn makes it Balad's the basis of a trust vote direction. And the final step three is the act of being sworn in as chief minister. Sorry? The act of being sworn in as chief minister. With Malad, in other party, fully supporting, in whose lap you were in Guwahati. Now, Malad, I am not on the, just kindly consider. You don't follow the affirmative part, which gives you play in the joints and leeway, flexibility. You don't resign. You don't merge. The most important, interesting point is you don't merge. Just, just see for a minute that B, 4B. Malaz, if you are sitting in their lap and they are supporting you, and the last minute, instead of them becoming chief minister, they make you chief minister, what is the problem with merging? So, Malaz, you say to hell with the 10th schedule, it gives me an escape route, I'll ignore it. I'll go to the three steps. And the language, without opening it, Malaz, without opening it, where his original political party merges with another political party and he claims and any other members of the original political party have become members of such political party or as the case may be of a new political party formed by such merger. Well, this is directly snooking a nose at the 10th schedule, which is a constitutional creation. It is, well, I'm sorry to use colloquial, it's actually saying, look, to hell with the current schedule, we have made this three-step procedure. Why on earth could you not recontest, resign, merge, or the fourth one? Condonation, I am not always getting into, that's another one. Go to the election commission and file a complaint then? On 21st, instead of Surat and Guwahati, why did you not file the well, election commission? So this is the first answer. This is one of the best answer at least I can give to the direct question, but there is a consequential answer further ahead. <laughs> I'm putting it against myself and trying to answer it because I put this question to myself and Lordship asked it yesterday. Now, Malaz, a possible argument will be twofold. That is no argument because Malaz, how it works in actual law, a fact is not an argument against me. If the law is a prohibitive and a affirmative, then you jolly well follow it. That's the object of creating a constitution. But now I'm giving an answer against me, even though it doesn't arise in law. The answer is, what happens, Mr. Singhvi, if between me, that is they, applying to the EC and doing these things which Mr. Singhvi is advising them to do, the speaker disqualifies you. I'm putting it bluntly against myself. Well, this first answer is, so what? Why were the tension you created, Balaz? Well, is the speaker doing something unknown to law? But there's a better answer. If he disqualifies you, there is full judicial. This is on the you basis wrongly. There is full judicial review. No, but you can't, because your lordships can't find a solution to everything which the constant assembly, uh, the constant amending people did not make. What is this answer? That what do I do? I will be disqualified. Well, jolly well, you'll be disqualified because the 1985 framers gave this part to the speaker. Is the possibility of an abuse ever the test of the power or its existence? Was can it be? Otherwise, how will you also decide anything? Yes, that phrase comes from Rajanayan versus Rajanayan versus Indira Gandhi. Possibility of abuse is not the test of power. Give that citation. Yes. Hindustan, Hindustan judgment. One Hindustan, Hindustan construction, some judgment is there. Also, in the sun construction. Abuse of power, power cannot be the. You are also should judge everything. Oh, what will happen? What may happen? That's not the question. Here, well, and your lordship is talking of lesser cases. Here, the constitution was amended to give this power. And the apprehension is, I will not go on 21st to speaker, I, uh, to uh, EC. I will go to Guwahati because I'm scared of a disqualification. Now, well, let us look at the second. I'm giving a lot of extreme examples against myself. You have a full review possible. My review is much more truncated. It takes one year for me to get this hearing before your lordships. Your review is immediate on a wrongful decision. 
against the speaker. And your Lordship knows Kyoto says, after a final decision of the speaker, you can get a stay of that. You can't get a stay while he's deciding. You can get it afterwards. Of the disqualification also. Only a quiet debate is stopped. You are comparing that with what? With the fact that if you don't do this and stay and make the 10th schedule a dead letter and install a new government on the basis of ignoring the 10th schedule, that is much less reversible by sheer passage of a few days than your right to challenge. Today, man, what is the whole argument? It's a scrambled dead, it's a fake accompli, your Lordship can't reverse it. It's one year down the line. That's the real argument today. That's the argument we are facing. Now, let me give you another bizarre example against myself. These are not one of the normal examples. Whereas I don't know, except a very few number of cases, where you have the courage of conviction to resign and recontest. That resignation is impeded. It happens. There are two or three judgments we have. But normally, you know, let me assume against myself that I resign because of my high standards and my resignation is not accepted by the speaker. That's the worst I can assume against myself, Willis. Right. I can't assume something more than that, Willis. Again, Willis, the speaker can only reject my resignation and disqualify me. He cannot do anything more. The speaker cannot say that you shall Willis, do this or that. He, he, he'll at the most say, I reject your uh, uh, resignation and I disqualify you. Same remedy. That remedy, your lordship will stay in two seconds, Willis. Suppose your lordship had an MLA who resigned to fight a new election and the speaker, there may be bizarre cases, I don't know. Speaker said, no, I disqualify you. How long will it take a court to give a stay of that order, Willis? I mean, your lordship is dealing with these cases on and off every day, Willis, in some form or the other. But here, Willis, none of these four or five possibilities is allowed to be tried because you apply, adopt, a three-step procedure to annihilate the 10th schedule. Which brings us to the harmonization principle. I'm not going to cite law about harmonization. From ordinary petty contracts to constitutional law, your Lordship's first principle is harmonization. From statutory delegated legislation up to the constitution. But I want to make the different point here that why did the 10th schedule come? Malas, we read Mr. Ashok Sen's speech in Malas, the, when he piloted this 85 thing. The whole purpose is that you have come through a party seat. You go and face the electorate again, whether with that party, independent or a third party. That's the whole long and short of this, Malas. Malas, have you lordship ever heard this happening except in some very rare cases in England or other democracies? There's no concept. I've come on a party. I'll either resign or I'll just leave that and fight again from another party. That was the whole purpose of this. But what you are telling the court is that no, I will affirmatively not resign. I will not go to the EC. Why? Because I'm scared that somebody will disqualify me. But then what was Mr. Ashok in enacting in 1985? He's enacting a power of disqualification for changing a party. What is the purpose of two-thirds of the parliament saying so if you can simply... What is the harmonization principle that you are referring yeah. to? Harmonization is this five, four-fold, well, it's five originally with the faction, otherwise four, are the flexibility, play in the joints, affirmative, permissibility part of the 10th schedule. And the 2-1-A, 2-1-B is the negative prohibitory part. You can do all these four without doing the negative part. For the negative, you don't have to well as violate the ne negative part. For any of these four, I will say even if you go to the election commission, you don't have to violate a whip. You don't have to well as voluntarily give up your party. You say, I'm on principle, please decide this. So in other words, you are saying other than those five instances, four now. Every, four, everything else is, everything else falls within the net of 10 schedule. And one more thing I'm saying. That in 10 other... schedule, absolutely correct. And the 10 schedule has both parts. It has those four. It has a negative. It well, creates a whole code by itself. Harmonization means that your lordship will adopt my submission and inter interpretation because it harmonizes the negative and the positive. Now for 30 seconds, see if your lordship does not adopt the harmonization principle. <coughs> the only thing a lordship will have to validate is a three-step procedure. There's nothing else. Well, it's staring a lordship in the face. The three-step procedure 
I want to ask myself, Malus, in which case will the 10th schedule bite? Let's, Malus, be very blunt. What your lordship will do is your lordship's domain. But today, your lordship's other option, other than my option, which I am submitting most humbly and respectfully, is adopt the three step procedure or validate it or recognize it. Malus, then how will 10th schedule apply? It cannot. And then, Malus, your lordships would be actually adopting an interpretation which reduces the 10th schedule to vanishing point. Actually, vanishes, then vanishing point, it vanishes. Every case of defection, I will say, I'll not resign. I won't go to the EC. I won't merge. Merger is given to you by the para 4 of the, of the, of the 10th schedule. I will not do it. But, as your lordships was told, I am the party, I am the overwhelming majority, I am the main person, I am it. I am it. Therefore, to hell with the 10th schedule. So, on principles of interpretation and much more so of constitutional interpretation than even statutory, this is a much better way to look at it than Malus, the contrary view. Because your lordship Malus, gives meaning to both sides and your lordship does not adopt something. What is this other adoption which is pro propounded to your lordships? On the high moral principle of democracy, dissent, free speech. Each of my four options gives you that option. So what the 10th schedule does is, it says, I am giving you a free speech option. I am giving you a democracy option, but within my own terms. I am not giving you a Jangal Raj free speech and democracy option. Otherwise, why would I enact a 10th schedule? See, the merger, Dr. Singhvi was not an option open to them because they were not claiming to merge their party with yeah, either the BJP or any other party. With respect, I'm sorry right. to interrupt, Malus. Why not? So, merger was not an option. No, it was an option, Malus. They did not of choose course, to exercise you're it. You're right, you're right. Ah, that's correct. It's an option. They chose not they to exercise an option. In, an, in the abstract. But it's they were not following the merger route at all because it's not their case that, look, this part of the Sena that's exactly has my point. with another party. That is not That's here. exactly my point with greatest humility. Then the only point is that in a situation like this, where they say that we have lost faith with the leader of the party, yes. then the only con then the only option according to them, according to you, is that you resign and recontest. No, I will stick, stick to my four options. That's huh? I'll say all the four options are. No, 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 no. No, no. What 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 do they do then? No, no. Whereas resign is one. Right. These nine people with merge with another political party, why not? But the fact that I don't exercise an option. That, that is not an option because merger means that their political identity as the Shiv Sena is lost there. That, that, well, then in that case, if the 10th schedule says that I recognize only this path of exit of, from this room, you can't say I'll make a new tunnel to get out. But you know, doctor, you can't make part a new... of your argument is a problematic argument. So that look, problematic. I'll tell you why. Because your argument postulates that if you have a dissension, then the only way you can express the dissension is to leave the party and merge somewhere else. One? They say, sorry, we don't want to leave. I mean, right. ideologically, I am a Shiv Sena man. No. I don't want to leave, he says. He says, I don't want to leave the party. So, as per the argument, see, Balut, even, see the even, if, even if somebody applies to the election commission at yes. the initial stage instead yes. of in the legislative assembly Correct. and says that we now want the political party to as that we are the political party as, recognize us. So even that, according to your argument, is impermissible then? No, no. Because? So because that's outside the so long five as, instances that no, you have no, given. No, no, no. One of my five is EC. He's not resigned. I beg, No, no. One is resignation. One is split, which is gone now. One is merger. The fourth is EC. Fourth is EC. Now, whereas if I apply to EC without violating a whip and get a decision, if I apply to EC without voluntarily resigning, it's perfectly permissible. I can't be saying I'll topple first and then I'll apply to EC. So remain a member, be a part of it, and, and Balas, vindicate your principle. Absolutely. Balas, I just see the reverse of it, but just, just consider how it will apply. You first topple the government, then you go to the EC. Why did you write the 10th schedule? That we understand. No, and, and Malus, also, apropos by Lord Chief Justice Query, Malus, are you harmonizing or not? There is one more thing. The fact that you don't choose consciously not to excise an option but does not mean you can wish away the option. The option is a constitutional option. It's a constitutional option. It's as equal to split as it was earlier. You don't exercise it. It really amounts to saying this. I want to avoid the 10th schedule. 
So I will put blinkers and close my eyes to four options available. Four constitutional options. The fifth one is deleted. And I will choose a new option, which is only the three-step procedure. First, disable the speaker. Second, approach the governor. Third, be sworn in. See, the negative prohibition in the 10th schedule is twofold. One, voluntarily giving up a membership. And two, defying a whip to 1A, to 1B. The 10th schedule certainly does not have any provision by virtue of which there is a prescription if you do not give voluntarily, if you do not give up the membership of the party and yet exercise a right of working your remedies within the party. It, 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 then you cannot be held to be a defector. Right. And that is the whole purpose. You were elected. But that's exactly the case. No, no but that's then in that case, why do you enact the 10th schedule? Well, 10th schedule is not Balaj saying that well, Article 19.1a, just see 194, well, it's a very interesting article. It is not saying Let me put this harmonization, which is a very important principle, in another way. What is the scheme of whole, this entire system? Well, if your lordship were to make a standard as broad as if you have a dissent, you can violate the 10th schedule. Then your lordship will uh, unmanageable. Then, but unmanageable. your argument, Dr. Singhvi, would be yes. the extreme argument on this side, which possibly you can adopt also, is that any dissension amounts to the voluntary voluntary giving up of the membership of a no, party. I'm going to give one of the more, one, I, I'm not an extreme, the other argument is extreme. I'm going to give a harmonized answer. Immediately to that, the principle can never be Malas dissent. I'm not happy, therefore I can go. Three answers, Malas. One, for everybody has dissent, Malas. Which political party? There are enough inbuilt outlets within the party to express dissent. One, that is what your lordship will always say. Two, the dissent within the party at the appropriate fora can be followed by any of these four. Three. Three. You, Malas, if you are having dissensions and you are not satisfied with the party system, then, Malas, you will simply express it that I am resigning or doing, Malas, going away with nine-tenths of the people. But, Malas, how will you say that mere disagreement entitles me to topple. Here they have not expressed dissent. Well, it's not a case of dissent. I have not gone out and spoken against the party. Dissent plus. This is dissent plus, plus, plus. Dissent plus toppling. You lordship remember when I started, Malus, I think there was a Navabrevia hearing. You lordship notices, Malus, uh, 191, 2 and 194. Lordship may not remember that. We'll just kindly turn to that for a minute. 191 bracket 2 is an clear statutory, uh, the constitutional prohibition in the 10th schedule saying you shall be disqualified. That's the 10th schedule comes from 191 bracket 2. Now, 194 which follows 
two clauses later says subject to the provisions of this constitution there shall be freedom of speech in the legislature and whereas 191a is even more reasonable restrictions now it can't be that mere saying free speech i can violate i i'll violate you can act within the party constitution whatever the party constitution allows some party constitutions have malus even appellate bodies some have two level things you can actually do all of it before you go by these four escape routes of merger resignation you can do all of it but ultimately if it doesn't work you have to take these four routes and 194 1 makes it clear subject to the provision of this constitution and to the rules and standing orders regulating the procedure there shall be freedom of speech in the legislature of every state this is not much as a open ended charter And when it's plus, kindly see the consequences. Doctor Singhvi, according to you, when does the governor then award uh, order a trust vote? No, the governor. When it's the governor has no role at all in such a situation. Governor, first answer your lordship is when the government is formed, or when the government is about to be formed. That's the inception argument. The governor will never come into a tenth schedule situation. It's a matter. What is the lordship considering? an intra party dispute at the end of the day what is the dissension i don't like you i don't like you intra party how does it come to think up to intra party dispute how does it even recognize it are there all kinds of feuds going inside parties how does my lord lay down in english language a judicially manageable standard to control the governor peeking into intra party disputes for us it will be thin end of the wedge this is nothing but political party a intra the governor will deal with some constitutional issue or something relating beyond intra party and how will the governor deal without any specific article mind you us in a sense superseding and overdoing the 10th schedule which is a constitutional article with 1912 which we tend to forget 1912 read with the 10th schedule
the couple of things. Step one was, uh, as we saw, I mean, the three, the three, uh, the three steps that you told us. Just yes. one second, I'll just go, down, go back to it. Correct. Notice of removal to the speaker. Yes. Resolutions given to the governor and yes. the act of being sworn in as a CM. Correct. This one step earlier, probably one one step which you can also add there, which was the governor's trust vote stop. communication. I'm grateful. Mr. I'm grateful. Right. Now, four step there. Procedure. Suppose, uh, you know, notice of removal of the speaker, we are not really called upon to adjudicate upon the validity of the. What is What is it? No, no, it's time, it's time. No, except, except in Navam Arabia. Your Lordship, if your Lordship chooses to refer, would have that issue. Navam Arabia, if we choose. in the broad, no, no, I'm saying it arises. I'm not saying your Lordship may have to for this case. I'm saying that's the core issue in Of course, no, no. I'm saying, well, it's, it's an issue. Which governor, the governor right. asked for a trust vote. Yes. Two ways of looking at it. Well, the governor had material to call for a trust vote. In which case, a further issue would arise as to whether he was justified in calling upon Shinde to form the government. Pinpointing, picking out a person and saying. Picking out a person because Correct. even assuming that the governor had material to call for a trust vote. What is the basis for picking up Shinde? Second, that the governor had no material to ask for a trust vote. Absolutely. That there was no valid material at all That's on the basis question. of those three circumstances. That's a core question. And well, it's, uh, that goes to the heart of the matter. Well, if I may digress for 30 seconds, Mr. Dushar Mehta was right when he quoted the couplet, but perhaps didn't realize that the second sentence applies against him. He quoted Bashir Bhadra to say, Chup rahe to galat femio or galat femia or bi badhi. Usne wo bi suna jo maine kaha nahi. Usne wo bi suna jo maine kaha nahi. Well, as the governor in his letter at 326 PDF <laughs> talks of a resolution to exit the government, which doesn't exist at page 55 of the resolution itself there. So he's yeah, hearing the, things. The, joke. the resolution doesn't say that we are exiting the government. Yes. So he heard something. We had said, wanted to. <laughs> well, I found a more appropriate one for Mr. Mehta. I found a more appropriate phase for Mr. Mehta. Not Bashir. Bhatt. So the only question was whether there was a valid exercise of power by the governor to call for a trust vote. And if we, but what happens if we come to the conclusion that there was no valid exercise of power by the governor to call a trust? Everything falls. Everything falls is very. Uh, no, no, very I'll, be, I'll be dealing with Bhaman. That's actually that's the core question. Your lordships is saved a lot of unnecessary exercise if your lordship comes to that conclusion plus follows Bomai, which in any case is. So then years. you, according to you, what we reinstate uh, the Uddhav Just Thakre read, government. Straight away, let me just change my tack and go to Bomai. But you resign, no? No, no. That's I covered in my note directly. Five reasons. Justice Shah asked me that one at the beginning. Your lordship asked me that. I straight away answer. That is actually red herring. My resignation and not facing the Malad's uh, trust vote is irrelevant. Completely. But that's Mr. No, Malad, I, I'll deal with it. So let me deal with it. So let me deal with that. If you, it's like the court being told that you reinstate a government which has. No, no, Malad, it is, it's an acknowledgement by I, you. I hear your Lordship loud and clear. It's a question asked earlier, and it is actually a plausible looking thing, but it's actually irrelevant. I'll show that in a minute. No, no, Mr. Kapchil. How can just hypothetically? Yes. Yes, yes. How can the court reinstate a chief minister, correct? Who did not even face uh, the floor of test? Your lordship is not reinstating anybody. Your and what will, what will be the consequences? Your lordship is and should and does, and Bomai says it more graphically, restore status quo ante. We That's would. the meaning of a. But, uh, Ms. No. Dr. Singhvi, it would have been a logical thing to do. That's where we are, you know, it would be a logical thing to do, provided you had lost the trust vote on the floor of the no, assembly. Lordship may just flag that. I mean, right, I because then, 
clearly you have been ousted from I, power I, because of a trust vote which is set aside correct. duty bound to set aside sir i believe well, that right is, now our problem is look at the look at the intellectual conundrum yes yes that it's not that you have been ousted from power as a result of a trust vote which was wrongly summoned by the governor you chose not to you chose you whatever reason you didn't want to face the well, trust I, vote i base that squarely specific. allow me well, i'll change my sequence and come to this first right now may i well, because straight away your lordship's conscience should be satisfied this is a red herring it should not deter should will not deter in loyal lordships if your lordships comes to the conclusion of the other one give me just 5 minutes on this may i end the first part bolus that is bolus this uh, affirmative and negative quote uh, yes when, that you made only one with only... now dr singhvi we are about 3 we are 17 minutes past 18 minutes closing on 18 minutes past 3 pm excuse me bolus I think three thirty will close now. I think we have we have seen everything now. No, no, Malus, you lot. I am asking. Three thirty is now Malus three twenty. I've done one out of my seven points. Malus, this is a matter no, of some. I am not going to conclude. I mean, Malus, I can't just go in. Conclude, Malus, but it is a very useful in, when your lordship asks questions. Your, it is now very useful. Now your points are really alaps of your. Uh, no, no, Malus, with respect, you are you are you joined our council. Malus, I have argued one out of eight points. I would not okay. otherwise take time. And Malus, your lordships, it is not intended okay, to stop your lordships, Malus, querying because your queries have actually make us think. All right, Doctor Singh, you are always very precise. You are always very precise. Now go into the next point. Your lordships' compliment is intended to render me speechless, Malus. I am not going to be no, speechless. No, 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 no. No, it's not. Now, Malus, a few Doctor minutes. There is too much. The point is, this is there is a lot of. Stuff that we have to reflect on now, and we just want you. So, well, maybe your lordship will just a little over four o'clock. Come, is it for us so that we can have? Let me speed along, and while your lordship may give me a few minutes after four minutes. See, I am very keen to finish, but I am not. Till now, I have not repeated a single point. I will also do facet. Now, not interrupt you. Guys. Yes. So, well, let me end this first point by saying, let me end the first point by asking myself a reverse question: What happens in my first point of uh, affirmative and negative? If your lordships were to accept their interpretation, that's a good way of answering my malus proposition. Namely, your lordship will have nothing left in the tenth schedule. How does your lordship operate? Both the four step or the three step becomes the norm, and will be followed in every case to defeat the tenth schedule. Got that's my first point. Second point on resignation. Now malus, your lordship also has to deduct malus till two twenty while your friends are occupying your lordships. <laughs> and now malus. <laughs> Now the second point. Just look at this uh, this resignation trust vote a little carefully, brothers. I have three or four answers. It is irrelevant for the following reasons. Well, it's just turn to para. Singhvi, the reason why we are wrapping you are wrapping you up, so to speak, is not because you have no case. Yeah, we are no, 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 brothers. I ask you to wrap up only because now the burden shifts well, maybe on us to as adjudicators to apply our mind and. Yes. Step back no, and so let uh, me, well, now decide. Speed up. I think well, oral oral things help, but to speed up, let me ask you also to read para fourteen of my note A seven. Para fourteen. Just formulate it for us. I yes, mean. the formulation. Now we've now got a. When Malad's well, now I'm answering the second 14, head. Uh, okay, page seven. I had six seven heads. This is my second head. Education. And it starts Malad. Well, this head starts at page six. It starts at para nine page six. Resignation. The act of resignation. Act of resignation. The act of resignation subsequently on 29 June would not defeat and would have no relevance to the reversal of the illegal action of the governor of 28-6. And in accordance with precedent, this honourable court should effectuate a real and meaningful remedy. Now, as the lordship recollects my A3 submissions, para A to N, which are repeated here, I I argued, as E B use E B remedian, fair complete status quo ante, all that. I'm finishing off in one para. I'm not arguing. I'm just reminding your lordship. Now skip all that and come to Malus para fourteen, for a minute. Does my lord have para fourteen? Once the illegal act of the governor is allowed to be implemented, the result was a known and foregone conclusion. Factually, there was no need for the ex CM to subject himself to it. The most important thing is it's a prior challenge. The illegal act of the governor is a prior pending sub judice challenge before the trust vote. So you are really saying that Mr. Uddhav Thakre resigned only because he was called upon by the governor to face a trust? Uh, I'm grateful. After I had filed a petition, after I had made it sub judice, and after I had said this is completely unknown to law, don't allow it to go on. And you are frankly accepting the fact that well, you resigned because a trust vote was going to go against. When you do an illegal act, yeah. you, the consequence of that is known to me. Now, just can you, to save time, let me read it. The crux of the issue raised in the petition, where Lordship has got 14 A malus. 
14A third line. The crux of the issue raised by the petitioner remains that the direction to hold the trust vote was an illegal act because the governor did so by recognizing a faction of 34 legislators. The CM's participation or absence of participation would not dilute that fundamental illegality. If it's illegal, it's illegal. How, how does my non-participation validate the act of the governor is the core question. That's the correct legal answer. In law, since the illegality of 28 was already sub judice, so prior is important, and pending in a court, a participation or absence of participation of XCM could not possibly affect the prior illegality, which is already sub judice. Now, as, as an example, if one, this is very important, if one were to assume that I had subjected myself to the trust court, the XCM had subjected himself on 30th and lost, and after losing challenge the trust court, it would make no difference in law because the trust force was merely the consequence of the illegal act of the governor. And the challenge would still relate to the governor's actions and not to the trust vote. B, it is therefore obvious in law, Malas, that the consequence of an illegal act, emphasis on consequence, cannot determine the legality of that act or val validate it. Indeed, it could also be said that the petitioners having challenged the core illegality at the base, namely the governor's actions, without any delay, did not even need to challenge the trust vote. I could have said it's nothing but a consequence. Similarly, if the individual illegal actions are broken up and whether they are different petitions, it is clear that for the purpose of legal validity, either the first act of the governor in calling for a protest or the subsequent act of the governor in inviting an administering oath, the participation or absence of the XCM has no relevance. Now let's just go back up, up to up. Let's kindly scroll up on this uh, section. Come to para four, uh, well, it's, uh, three. No, I'm sorry. Para Malas. So this is the second point. No, this is Singh. the second point, but just one thing is left here, Malas. Uh, para 9. Para 9. I'm not troubling you. A3, my submissions A to N are giving the law EBUs, meaningful, status quo ante, scrambled ed, fay accompli. All that is given with law, Malas, in that. Kindly, Malas, do me the favor of treating it as having stated here. Now, Malas, number 10. Indeed, in Bomai, Paras, etc. given, the overwhelming majority of nine judges made it clear that the proclamation under President's rule under 356, there were two states involved, Malus, Karnataka and Meghalaya, is very important, is liable to be struck down and the dismissed government is fully entitled to be restored to office. But the only reason we are not doing it because elections have been happened in the intervening period. Now, just bear, this is very important. This has not been shown to your lordship. Just give me a minute. 398 and others, five judges out of nine say this. Five. First is Justice Willis, Jeevan Reddy, with Justice Agarwal. The proclamation must therefore be held to be not warranted by Article 350 outside its purview. Cannot be said that the president was satisfied that the government of the state cannot be carried on. The action was malafide and unconstitutional. The proclamation is accordingly liable to be struck down. And we would have struck it down, but for the fact that elections have since been held and a new assembly has come in. That's the only exception. Today, the illegal government is running. There is no elections. Then, Malus, and the person who otherwise, suppose a lordship holds the governor to be bad, then a person not entitled to be holding the post, holding the post of chief minister? How can Malus, of all courts, the Supreme Court accept such illegality? Malus, if your lordship's, Malus, your lordship's powers are unique in this country, in that even your lordship's, Malus, can go beyond the law, not contrary to law, beyond the law. Then, Malus, what's the point if the governor's actions are held to be illegal? Actually, your lordships would be well as giving a Perik declaration and accepting that the illeg illegality has borne the fruits of its illegality and people have enjoyed it. Now, let's just see the next one. In state of Meghalaya, it's very interesting, well, it's for the other state in Bombay, para 12 of my note. Again, well, Justice Reddy said, but for the fact that since the proclamation, fresh elections have been held to the assembly. So suppose Meghalaya had not had elections and Karnataka had. They would have restored in Meghalaya. We would have certainly issued the written directed restoration. Justice Savant for himself and Justice Kuldeep Singh, our conclusions may be summarized. However, in view of the fact that fresh elections have been taken place and new assemblies have been constituted all, no relief is granted consequent upon the declaration. Therefore, Malas, this is the heart of this point. Now come to Malas, page 1 on 189. The third point is 189. All right. That is coming separately. That's coming separately. What is the point, Dr. Singhvi? Yes. Now, well, a very strange argument was raised, de facto doctrine, regularization and validation by 189. Mr. Salve argued at length, Mr. Mehta also argued, page I believe. 189, I'm sorry to interrupt. What is 189? No, page one. Page one of my note. Page. That is, well, the de facto doctrine 
that actions validated by the actual act which is challenged is illegal. I want to show Manoj how, how wrong this can be and how dangerous it, it is. Give me just two minutes. The case law makes it clear, but just come to the case law later. Just give me two minutes. Malas, the first important thing is to note that Malas, there are two kinds of challenges. One is a challenge to the very validity of the act. Come to para 8, Malas, of my note. So I challenge well, a validity of an act. Let us say the Governor's Act. Let me say competence of a legislation. Let me say fundamental rights. Versus the eligibility of certain people to act under the act. To sit there and act. Your Lordship under 189 protects the second, not the first. If the Governor's action is bad, will 189 ever pro protect it? Well, Mr. Malad, my learned friends, two of them argued at great length on 189. Did they answer the question? Ultimately, the core question, my Lord, is just formulated either way, this way or that way. Is the governor valid or not valid? If your Lordship holds him to be invalid, 189 comes only after your Lordship holds something to be invalid. Otherwise, it doesn't come into play. Can, is said in the context of the vote in the House. So, with respect to exactly. So, therefore, brothers, no, no. 189, your Lordships can and may, and in this case, perhaps should, in the intervening period of seven, eight months, the decisions taken by an otherwise illegally constituted government may be valid under 189. That's the real commonsensical way of implementing it, Bullis. I am not suggesting that somebody's appointment is quashed, somebody's transfer is gone, somebody's policy decision, so what Maras, really government made is, a liquor policy, therefore Supreme that is gone. What saying is that Article 189 recognizes a de facto doctrine. De facto doctrine. What the de facto doctrine does is to legitimize the acts of an authority whose original appointment is found to be invalid. Subsequently found to, Subsequently be, found Correct. to be invalid. Correct. But that does not validate the original appointment. That's the, just, that's the one sentence pithy summary. Just give me a minute. Come to D. 8D. 8D. Or calling for... The, that goes back to the same thing. Willis. First act was what? The governor being approached, governor calling. The two others are consequences. Voting is a consequence of the governor's illegal act. So is the oath taking. If the original act is bad and your lordships can't validate it, then this will not validate the vote. Well, the consequence is bad. The consequence of an illegal origin cannot validate the illegal origin. And similarly, 189 cannot... Cons Sorry. What you're saying is that in if the calling of... The voting in the house itself is subject That's to... That's yeah. just how my lords formulated, Malas. Right or wrong, governor's action, A, no basis, and B, if basis, Malas, it is wrongly applied, etc. But that's the affirmation of the house, right? Then, I mean, I still have... A affirmation is coming. That's okay. this section. Bomai dealt with the affirmation. All right. Okay. Bomai said, we hold something to be illegal. Let's kindly give you a minute. This is very interesting. But thereafter, parliament has approved it. Exactly the same thing. How can we quash it? Said, no, sorry. Will be quashed. Can you come to that now? So, first, well, let's come to yes, I'll just show 50. Just keep 356. Sima's query answered by Bomai. Para four of my note. This note. Much worse, fellas. Here there was nothing in our case, there's nothing. There there was a presidential proclamation affirmed by parliament in Bomai. Now come to Malas Para. Four, it is respectfully submitted that the said contention is misconceived, liable to be rejected in Bombay. Does my lord have it? Para four, do my lords have it? Yes. 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 Consider the effect of approval of a presidential proclamation by both houses on the legal validity of the proclamation when it is questioned before the constitutional court. Held a clear majority, five judges, brothers, that if a proclamation on three is invalid, the same as liable to be set aside even if it has been subsequently approved by both houses. Your Lordship is told 289, 189. This is express approval. This is express approval. Now read this para. Very interesting. Uh, 110 Justice Savant for Justice Kuldeep. We, we got the point. I mean, you are saying that the Bombay has a... Now there is one interesting, uh, very interesting. Well, after 29 years and two days, this is happening in a Lordship's court. This para 110, that bold face line by Justice Savant says invalid. Lordship got the second line underlined. 
the, yes. the all the books will say it's valid. SCC. SCC. SCR correctly says it's invalid. SCC for 29 years and two days called it valid. Oh, I hope yes. you are citing our ESCR, Dr. Singh. <laughs> no, no. This is, we've checked up. Then they issued a corrigendum. When my learned friend's colleague here, sitting here, pointed it out, then Malus, <laughs> the SCC Dr. issued Singh, a corrigendum. I must also publicly acknowledge there's a glitch in our in our ICT uh, ICT infrastructure overnight. My team was working till 5.30 in the morning. They began working yesterday. Oh, I see. They left for their homes at 5 o'clock in the morning, 5.30 in the morning. To ensure that you know we are all uh, it's very we are, we are uh, ICT enabled. It's very creditable. And unlike the private sector, they wouldn't get even a rupee worth of uh, <laughs> just a love for the job that they do. It's the time money. Private system is being educated. Your Lord says entitled to judicial right? Uh, <laughs> you are part of them. <laughs> no, this is just aside. The I'm word saying is... private sector or senior councils, I said. What you saying? Some of your lotsies, most of your lotsies. I told my learned brother, you are stop. part of them too. <laughs> Complete estoppel. Estoppel, that's why I didn't say. And a very recent estoppel, relatively. <laughs> now, well, the word invalid here is by corrigendum, the correct word. It, it is in the SCC valid. So it can't be valid. We just note that. What is the legal consequence of actions taken by the president if the proclamation is invalid? Yet it is approved by both houses. Come to triple one lordship. You see, I'm racing only on the underlined portions. The proclamation will not make any difference to the legal status. Express approval. Forget 189. Parliament expressly approves. The action will undoubtedly be illegal. Then we'll skip 10 lines. There is no reason why the Council of Ministers and the Legislative Assembly should not stand restored as a consequence of the invalidation of the proclamation, the same being the normal legal effect of the invalid action. In the context of constitutional provision, which we have discussed, and in view of the power of judicial review vested in the court, such a consequence is also a necessary constitutional fallout. Necessary constitutional fallout. Get the point. Unless the result is read, the power of judicial review is negatory yeah. and meaningless. There is a, there is a constitutional permissible, uh, it's permissible to have a complete restitution, is yeah. what you say. Otherwise, it's meaningless and negatory. The nine judges say that. The next sentence highlighted. Hence, the necessary consequence of the invalidation would be the restoration of the ministry as well as the legislative assembly. Then para 114, boldface. Secondly, the court may invalidate the proclamation, whether it is approved by parliament or not. The necessary consequence of the invalidation could be to restore the status quo ante. Therefore, to restore the council of ministers and the legislative assembly as they stood on the issuance of the proclamation. So if your lordship is otherwise convinced, the lordship needs no support than a, more than a nine-judge bench. Which is very clear. It may, however, to be made clear. Next sentence is very important. Next bold face. It is, however, to be made clear that the interlocutory relief that may be granted on such challenge to prevent frustration of the constitutional remedy. It is not to prevent the constitutional authority from exercising its powers and discharging its function. And then to conclude the court in appropriate cases not will be justified in preventing holding of fresh elections, but will be duty bound to do so by granting suitable interim relief. Then, Malus, they summarize the conclusions, which I will not read to save time. Clearly, Malus. Para after para is devoted by Justice Savan and Justice Kuldeep Singh. And well, just see seven, the another phrase, molding of relief, big Roman seven. Well, otherwise, what's the point your lordship is exerting so much, well, if your lordship comes to that conclusion with great respect? And that to a court with 141, 142 and special powers. Well, I can understand the High Court possibly well, is flinching. According to me, even the High Court has the power to do it under your lordship's judgment. Now, well, Justice Jeevan Reddy said this, well, is, even in case the proclamation is approved, it would be open to the court to restore the state government to its power. If this were not conceded, look at these words, fellas, nine judges, 29 years ago. If this were not the case, the very power of judicial review rendered nugatory entire excise meaningless. The court cannot grant the relief flowing from the invalidation. It may well decline to entertain. Well, they say if you can't grant the relief, why did you entertain? That's what this court is saying, nine judges. And then well, Justice Pandyan, just two lines above 4A, I find myself in agreement with the opinion of Justice P.B. Saman on conclusions 1, 2, 4 to 8. This includes my conclusions, well, which I just read, 4 to 8. So this is, well, the three points are covered, prohibitory, affirmative, 189, and well, resignation. Now, well, the fourth point is, this well, is prospective and retrospective of the EC. They're all important queries which fell from my Lord. My Lord, the Chief Justice asked this question more than once. That is C. 
That is because my C, my lord is right. Pages eight, eight to ten. Page eight. Just because forget everything else. I'll take one point. One point here is enough. Because whatever else the lordship holds on the bare text, textually and facially, symbol order number five, fifteen, has to be prospective. Else. Forget all the. We'll come to the interpretation. Just read the text facially. That's it. Para fifteen A of my note. Yes. Without anything more, we'll come to the consequences. Well, as the as drafted facially, without any interpretation, it has to be only prospective. Kindly read. Power of the commission in relation to splinter groups. Now I've underlined some words. I've taken the liberty of underlining some words. When the commission is satisfied on information on its possession that there are rival that there are rival sections or groups of a recognized political party, each of whom claims to be that party, the commission may. After taking into account all the available facts and circumstances, and hearing such reps of the sections or groups, and other persons who desire to be heard, decide that one such rival section or group, or none of such rival groups, shall be binding. Well, this cannot but be futuro. Number two, look at the consequences of holding otherwise. There will be well, very very strange consequences. Two things, brothers. Well, If your lordship were to hold the 19th July, that's the date. Yeah. Order of the EC. 17th February. Sorry, 17th February 2023. I'm sorry. 17th February. Petition is filed on 19th July. 17th February is the order. Now, well, is the order to be retroactive? Question number one: Retroactive from when? There are three possibility retrospectivities. Look at the consequence. Well, the lordship doesn't hold it to be without the consequence. Three. One is, it is retroactive from the date the Shiva Sena was recognized as a 29A political party. That was in 1990 or 92. I'm giving you three alternatives. I'm not because today I am the election commission. I hold that this is the Shiva Sena. If it is retroactive, logically it should go to the date when 29A. But let's leave that. Second. It goes back to 21st June when this action started, and third, it goes to 19 July when the petition was filed. There are only three possibilities, Balus. In all of these, the consequences would be that Balus actually everything. I would be guilty, but I I am actually I I by I, I I mean people who have remained with Mr. Thakre. I'm just using a phrase because there's no other phrase available. And people who have left. Now, the people who have followed the 10th schedule and remained with Mr. Thakre would be actually liable for disqualification if your lordship relates back that. So your lordship would be giving a premium to those who follow the 10th schedule, and the people who have not followed the 10th schedule will protect their disqualification also and disqualify me also. Where is your lordship? Will not avoid the inevitable consequence. By Balus, of course, your Rosh's words can always Balus. That's the logical consequence of retroactivity. They would make an arc of immunity for their own disqualification and actually be liable because the party from 19th July, any whip, any order, everything, I have violated because I'm not the party from 19th July, and therefore Balus, I'm liable to something, or from actually logically speaking from the origin. Therefore, Malus, this huh? and Malus, it would have the strange effect of an election of Mr. Udav Thakre in 2018. Would also go without there being a fresh election unseating him. Everything will go, Malus. No adjudication by the mere act of recognition relating back either to 1990s or to 2000 and uh, Malus 19th of July or to 23. Well, it's, uh, I mean, 21st of June. Well, there would be well, it's chaos. The consequences, well, it's are, and apart from the fact, well, that this is clearly textually not well, it's intended by the symbols order. The fourth and the last, well, under this head, I'm not on the next point. Under this head, it would also destroy not collateral damage, well, it's major direct damage. It would destroy the relating back, which is held by a lordship of Rajendra Rana. Uh, note this well. Note this. Not a single judgment, even of any high court, leave aside Supreme Court, says that the election commission will relate back. 
a constitution bench has held the field for very long saying a disqualification 10th schedule order relates back if your lordship were today to do this your lordship would be giving primacy to a order under a symbols order with any judicial precedent not saying so versus a constitutional provision already held by a constitution bench to relate back and your lordships cannot reconcile a relation back of disqualification with the relation back of the ec it can't be reconciled today malas suppose tomorrow the speaker disqualifies mr abc it is common ground by rajendra rana and many other cases it relates back to malas uh, june 23 uh, 22 but there cannot be disqualification because by then your lordship orders also would be applying a ec order retroactively therefore malus your lordship already has jurisprudence and a precedent prospective according to you right. then malus the fifth aspect is this political party and legislative party so dr singh we now 5 minutes now malus we will finish before lordship's time we will Not within this time we'll finish so we are conscious of that malus 345 minutes we'll finish it in time i'll give him 5 minutes also he'll have 5 minutes now malus f is a very important part actually it goes to the root this is the political party versus legislative party debate but from an angle different than mr sibbel this is very well understood mm. kindly malus read this from a different perspective f right yes f Not starting para 35 page 12 well as members of a legislature party do not have any right to act contrary to the directions of their political party this is the heart of the political party legislative party debate with which mr well as call also started today at 2 o'clock as per 1941 the freedom of speech is subject to the provisions i pointed out already under 170 bracket 1 the assembly of a state consists of members the members are elected by direct election from territorial constituencies and the nature of the election process is such that an elected member set up by a political party has no independent identity in the house except as a member of the political party well actually in practice how we sit where we sit which rooms we are given is all based on the collectivity of a party not an individual suppose a member is a leader of a party is very very senior but that party has only three seats and another party with yesterday's first time member but the party is large number seats are allocated rows are allocated rooms are allocated only on the basis of party that's the way it has to be one now prior to introduction of, this is very very important just kindly see this 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 evolution has been forgotten in this argument of political party and and legislative party prior to the tenth schedule prior to 85 the constitution did not mention political party anywhere although in parliamentary democracy the heart as the lordship has in the english books political party westminster model is political party even though political parties were always recognized to be an essential component of the westminster form of parliamentary government political party as a term was defined for the purpose of election law in para 2h of the symbols order thereafter through amendments the ropa the representation of peoples act when was put political party there are the two statutory levels it came in malus for the first time with the Uh, 10 schedule which is a constitutional recognition of political parties and today a lot of people been asked to negate that recognition next para on the other hand the concept of a legislature party has no legal or statutory basis a legislature party by its very nature is not a permanent association of persons its life is coterminous with the term of the house the very coming into existence of a legislature party is dependent on a contingency the success of more than one or more than one candidate belonging to a political party the 10th schedule defines a legislature party in terms of a political party that is well as conclusive i say according to me i may be wrong it's conclusive legislature party is defined in terms of the political party i have quoted the definition and well as your lordship is concerned with a whip whip is peculiarly a political party activity the per i am 41 the purpose of defining the group of members of the house belonging to one political party as a legislature party can be gathered from the number of times when legislative party is used first in 21 it says a member of a house belonging to any political party what does it mean do you have an existence or identity other than the political party after constitutional amendment and definition 
10 mullahs. There is no mention of legislature party in para 2. None. In para 2, political party is mentioned. Thus, while referring to individual members, the 10th schedule refers to them as political party to which they belong and not in relation to legislative party. The only place in the 10th schedule where the term legislature party is used was either para 3 now gone or para 4. In para 3, the term legislature party was used when the faction of one third goes below. Four, in para 4, too, it is for merger. Doesn't arise in this case. Doesn't arise in this case. Thus, wherever the 10th schedule provides protection to a group of legislators when acting as a group, it uses the term legislative party. Otherwise, it is described with reference to political party. Now, what is the consequence? It's a little important. The constitutional sequitur of this discussion is that a majority faction legislative party has no constitutional identity except for the purpose of setting up a defense under four. This is important. Today, there is no status identity of a legislature party except for the defense of merger. That's all. And admittedly, that's not your case. If no defense is claimed, the legislature party has no constitutional or legal relevance as para 43. Therefore, the group of legislators belonging to a political party can have no right of dissent or consciousness. This dissent argument. Dissent has to be within the parameters of what 10th schedule allows you. Dissent cannot say, I'll over, and that's too broad a basis for your lordships to act or give any judgment on one. Dissent. I just say I'm dissenting and I leave the 10th schedule. Reliance is placed on the law of speaker where Dehoe the legislative assembly disqualification rule the president of the political party was not a member was given the right to maintain disqualification. Well, it's Sorry, this dissent point which your lordship put to me just now also, let me end on that. Just see Justice for us, uh, the so, uh, Kyoto. in Kyoto. That para has been read one sentence. Read the whole of it. This is directly the point raised in Kyoto. The Lordship should not be referring to Navam Revel or should be reconsidering Kyoto also on this basis. Now, kindly see. This is a very important para, Malus. Para 49 at PDF page 109. 109. Very telling para. Directly the same sentiment. How do you harmonize the two and you cannot allow one to be reduced to vanishing point? Kindly see this. And I'll end in about a minute or two, minutes. Indeed, in a sense, may I read this, Malus? 109. This is very, very important. It's a covered field. Your Lordship need not be agonized about it, as my learned friend would like your Lordships to raise a new issue before. It's a covered point. 109, no? 109 PDF, CJ2? CJ1. CJ1. Inappropriate acronym, Malus. <laughs> we called it, we used to call it CL1, Malus. Case Law 1. I don't know where this is. First time I found CJ1, Malus. Indeed, in a sense, an anti-defection law is a statutory variant of its moral principle and justification underlying the power of recall. What might justify a provision for recall would justify a provision for disqualification for defection. Now, kindly see the exact sentiment which my lords expressed to me. Unprincipled defection is a political and social evil. It is perceived as such by the legislature. People apparently have grown distrustful by the emotive political exaltations that such floor crossings belong to the sacred area of freedom of conscience or of the right to dissent or of intellectual freedom. Can't be put better. Well. The anti-defection law seeks to recognize the practical need to place the proprieties of political and personal conduct whose awkward erosion and grotesque manifestation is grotesque in 92. I don't know how much more grotesque it is now today. Well. Especially with the four-step procedure here. Whose awkward erosion and grotesque manifestations have been the bane of the times above certain theoretical assumptions, theoretical assumption, my learned friends have raised a theoretical argument, which in reality have fallen into a morass of personal and political degradation. We should, we think, defer to this legislative wisdom and perception. The choices in constitutional adjudications quite clearly indicate the need for such deference. Let the end be legitimate. Let it be within the scope of the constitution and by all means which are appropriate, which are adopted to that end. And here we have added, Malus, I have added four clear escape routes or Malus, mitigating circumstances. You don't follow them, but you follow this. This is Malus, extremely unfair. This is Malus, actually, this is again like the technique of giving a notice to the speaker. It is trying to decimate Malus, the entire schedule by saying dissent. 
descent has to be within the boundaries but well, i'm extremely grateful and thank you very deeply obliged thank you doctor yes mr common lord sir i'll finish in 5 minutes the 5 minutes left lord sir i have uh, put my thoughts in rejoinder in additional rejoinder a5 my lord which is just a 5 6 page document i have just five submissions to make the lord ships kindly have that the lords i had addressed your lord ships on writ petition 479 of 2022 which was a challenge to the decision you know that is a5 i'm sorry my lord right so rejoinder additional rejoinder a5 filed yesterday yes yes ma'am the lords i had made submissions my lord only on writ petition 479 which is challenging the validity of the decision of the speaker on 3rd of july 2022 that is my lord the change of recognition from sunil prabhu to bharat gogavle late in the evening of 3rd july now my lords the validity of this decision is my lords unconnected with the ultimate my lords view which your lordships will take in the disqualification proceedings whether your lordships want to decide it here or send it back this my lords challenge is an independent challenge your lordships will have to determine whether the speaker was right or wrong and the only defense which was taken originally in the reply was that it is 212 it is inside the house and i had said that that is completely in the realm of unconstitutionality there has been absolutely no rebuttal my lord that i have indicated in paragraph number 2 my lords item 2 3 my lords i had submitted sub roman sub roman uh, small 3 that the term political party is not an indeterminate nebulous concept today there are 30 people claiming there may be more factions claiming that i am the political party but on 21st of june there was only one political party that was my lord in writing which was communicated to the election commission that was headed by us not with respect this is not my lord a narova kunjarova policies are aware of mahabharat my lord that ashwatthama hata narova kunjarova whether they are shiv sena we are shiv sena in june my lord still they filed a petition on 19th of july there was no dispute there can't be any dispute in law that i represented the political party so that's the second point which has not been answered as far as section 29a is concerned now my lords mr sibbal has pointed out about the validity of the whip my lord and that only the political party can issue a whip and that erskin and may all that was cited and my learned friends have argued that no no it's a legislature party can issue the whip rule 31 etc the lordships have seen rule 31 rule 31 does not deal with a whip neither the form deals with a whip that is by convention and in fact affirmed by your lordship's judgment in mayavati kindly have the highlighted portion my lord paragraph 73 of mayavati reproduced in paragraph 3 here whatever direction is issued by the leader of such legislature party must be regarded as a direction issued by the political party this was the argument there is no merit in this contention when the provision in the constitution has taken care to make a distinction between the legislature party and the original political party and prescribe that the direction issued should be one issued by the political party or by any person or authority authorized in this behalf there is no meaning in saying that whatever the leader of the legislature party directs must be regarded as that of the original political party this is mr calls argument will not specifically rejected now a lot all this parliamentary convention which we have set out in paragraph 4 plot has not been rebutted not even one precedent shown my lord now my lords kindly turn to roman 3 and this is a legal submission my lord that having a legislative majority ipso facto or ipso jure is not suggestive of a majority in the political party my lords roman 1 and 2 have already been dealt with now my lords kindly have roman 3 in fact my lord there are one member legislature parties 
and in those malad circumstances and facts election commission has said that we have to see the organizational majority to see who is the political party so therefore melot is merely saying that you are a legislative majority and therefore you represent the political party is legally incorrect now melot's reference was made to sadikali that sadikali melot affirms this proposition in fact in sadikali melot this point was kept open and i have highlighted that melot kindly have a look at roman 4 the highlighted portion the present is not a case where a conflict in the has arisen because of one group having majority in the organizational wing and the other having a majority in the legislative wing this has fallen for consideration here now my lords one submission was made by mr jetmalani yesterday that look here we are also members of the pratinidhi sabha therefore we represent the political party lots on affidavits in the election commission and also here for which there is no rebuttal out of 220 pratinidhi sabha members 160 plus my lord have supported me 160 plus not rebutted now my lords kindly see the next submission which is made and this is again mr jetmalani submission that kihoto said in paragraph 97 that the decision of the speaker is not covered by 212 and that the rules made under paragraph 8 have a constitutional status and therefore violation of that two day period or to seven day period is violation of the constitutional mandate totally against ravi nayak malot not even one uh, judgment was cited in support of that submission but kindly see ravi nayak it's it's covered now kindly see paragraph 8 malot the highlighted portion the disqualification rules are procedural in nature and any violation of the same would amount to an irregularity in procedure which is immune, immune from judicial scrutiny then my lords i just have 30 seconds more i'll just finish now my lords then a reference was made to some speeches my lords uh, that i have dealt with lots some speech of some dg is totally inadmissible my lordships have held it time and again which your lordships have seen in kalpana mehta constitution bench and also in shivraj speeches by my lords members totally irrelevant for lot to decide what the scope of the provision is yes my lord then my lord uh, para 6 they said that mere not at attendance of a meeting will not amount to a para 21a specifically my lord this was the issue in shriman bala saheb patil one meeting they didn't attend it was held to be a para 21a which i have reproduced my lords in paragraph 14 now the last thing is important kindly have paragraph 15 my lords time and again my learned friends my lords said that we have never claimed a split in fact i remember my lord honorable justice kohli asking mr call is it your case that there is a split and he said on more than my lords five occasions which i have reproduced kindly see this first our case is not a split at all i have never argued i have a split now kindly see the submissions before the election commission and now the cat is out of the bag please have a look at paragraph 16 my lord of my note and i have reproduced paragraph 7 of their petition before the election commission in view of the above mentioned facts and circumstances it is evident that there is a split in the shiv sena and all the written submissions filed by mr mahesh jetmalani and mr shinde my lords categorically say there is a split i have pointed that out my lords in paragraph 17 to come here my lords and say that we are a faction we represent the political party is only sugar coating my lords the factum of a split lots uh, lastly my lord ultimately your lordships will decide or so i am reminded of a my lords uh, uh, sanskrit subhashit my lord and it says my lord ka kah krishna ha pika ha krishna ha that my lord the crow is also black the kaku is also black ko bedah pika ka ko what is the difference who's the shiv sena here vasanta samaye prapte ka 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 pika pika and i'm sure my lord the time of judgment will be clear my lord who's the real shiv sena thank you so much we'll be failing in our duty if i don't mention
that the assisting okay. councils, my lords, on both the sides did a phenomenal job in assisting us. And very grateful to your lodges for all the time. Our compliments to you for yes, yes, my lord, Rohit Sharma is yeah. Assistant. Or on the sites, one of they did a phenomenal job. We could not have argued this without their assistance. To the juniors is also yes. over. Yes. Very grateful, my lord, for all the time that your lodges gave us. For all the time that your lodges. We'll grateful, grateful. Very, very grateful.